Welcome to Sincerely Bhakti. My name is Bhakti Lata, and today we are exploring how to not get stuck on the way to the ultimate goal. Reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is, commentary by Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, reading chapter 6, verse 47. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. And of all yogis, the one with great faith, who always abides in me, thinks of me within himself, and renders transcendental loving service to me, he is the most intimately united with me in yoga, and is the highest of all. That is my opinion. Krishna is now offering the final verse of chapter 6, which is entitled Dhyana Yoga. And Dhyana Yoga has been explained by Krishna to Arjuna as this very rigorous process of meditating upon the Supreme Lord. Sitting in one place, putting your attention on the tip of your nose, controlling your breathing, controlling your senses, becoming celibate, controlling the mind, you know, a very rigorous process. And Arjuna has expressed, this is a little too rigorous for me. The mind is just too difficult to control. So then Krishna reassures him it's possible with practice and detachment. And then Arjuna expresses his fears about failure. And then Krishna is reassuring him, do not worry. Even if you fail on this path of transcendence, you can still have hope that you will be born into a rich or aristocratic or devotional family. You'll be okay. You'll be able to pick up where you left off. But at the end of this chapter, this final verse of chapter six, Krishna is ultimately saying, just have faith in me, abide in me, render service unto me. And that is how you'll be most intimately united with me. He's, that's my opinion. So he doesn't reiterate, no, sit in one place, control the senses, become celibate, do all these processes of dhyana yoga. He's saying, actually, develop bhakti yoga. And this is an interesting segue into the next section of the Bhagavad Gita, which is the middle six chapters which focus on bhakti yoga. So the first six chapters focus on karma yoga. And then they transition to the middle six chapters being Bhakti yoga and the last six chapters are jnana yoga. So there are 18 chapters in total. And so this last chapter is really hinting at what is to come in those middle six chapters. And Prabhupada emphasizes here that there is a very, very important word in, used in this verse, which is bhajate. And he says bhajate has its root in the word in the verb bhaj which is used when there is a need of service, which is so fascinating. He's saying there's a need of service and budgete is used only in connection to God. Prabhupada mentions later on in the purport that is applicable to the Supreme Lord only. So whereas the word worship is used only for demigods or other uh, living entities. So he's saying, budge, back to this definition, there is a need of service. So it's applicable to the Supreme Lord but the Supreme Lord doesn't need service. It's emphasized that the Lord is self-satisfied. He is Atmaram. So where is there a need for service? And it's not simply worship, because Prabhupada says here, worship means to adore, to show respect and honor to a worthy one. Uh, but service with love and faith is especially meant for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Prabhupada says here that we are meant to worship God. And that is bhakti yoga. But he is also emphasizing the importance of all of the other yogas that culminate in bhakti yoga. He mentions that, that you start with karma yoga, right? And then from he says, from the beginning of karma yoga to the end of bhakti yoga is a long way to self-realization. Okay, there's all these gradations. So there's karma yoga, and then you move on into jnana yoga, and then there's bhakti yoga, and there's so many uh, shades of selflessness, letting go of the fruits of your actions, and moving towards God and selflessness and love and faith. 
that is moving towards bhakti yoga, he says here that one who sticks to a particular point and does not make further progress is called by that particular name. So a karma yogi, jnana yogi, or dhyana yogi, raja yogi, hatha yogi, etc. So he also mentions that if you want to describe the highest mountain range in the world, the Himalayas, you also want to describe the highest mountain peak, which is Mount Everest. So that is the highest goal, is bhakti yoga. So we ultimately want to go to the culmination of all yoga, which is bhakti yoga. And Krishna is emphasizing that here, that you render transcendental loving service to Krishna, is bhajate. It is not simply meditation on God or to work in this world and offer the fruits of your actions. It is transcendental loving service. It's a loving exchange. So uh, Prabhupada emphasizes here that Krishna is the perfect child, husband, friend, and master, and he is full of all opulences and transcendental qualities. Reading a purport like this has me understand that somebody can read this particular translation and commentary of the Bhagavad Gita and become a devotee of Krishna because you realize this is the person that I'm searching for. This is the Mount Everest of love. This is the person that I want to offer my entire being to. He is the perfect child, husband, friend, and master. Who else? Show me someone higher. Show me someone higher in this world or in any of the pantheon of demigods or any other kind of religion or understanding. Who is that person that I'm searching for? It is Krishna. And that is our Mount Everest. That's who we're searching for. So those are my reflections on this final verse of chapter six, which is the chapter six is entitled Dhyana Yoga. And where Krishna is simply saying, worship me with love. And we are now transitioning to those middle six chapters of the Bhagavad Gita, which focus on bhakti yoga. So beautiful, moving forward towards love and devotion and faith. So thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Hare Krishna.